Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. On Monday, I was at my parents' house and my dad made this vegetable soup with grilled cheese to go along with it. So in the soup, there is ground beef, some cans of mixed vegetables and some fresh potatoes, carrots, and cabbage. So, so good. On Tuesday, I made a ham and hash brown casserole. It turned out amazing. We really loved it. And I served it with some steamed broccoli and garlic bread. I cooked the garlic bread in my air fryer and it turned out really good. And I'm just using the Great Value brand. And I will also be showing you all how I put this casserole together. So I did cut this recipe in half. So I whipped out my food scale to make sure that I got the right ounces. But you start off with frozen shredded hash browns. And this is the diced ham that I used. I used a half a package of that. And then I added in some sour cream, cream of chicken, melted butter, and some extra sharp cheddar cheese. And the recipe didn't call for seasonings, but I did end up adding some pepper, a little bit of garlic salt, and some onion powder. Hey, you. On Wednesday, I made breakfast for dinner, so I made some biscuits and gravy, which I will be showing you how I made it, and some bacon, scrambled eggs, and the rest of that leftover hash brown casserole. When Josh and I first got married, I would make biscuits and gravy at least once a week, but I stopped doing that, and it's been a long time since I made it, so it definitely hit the spot. Here, I'm about to make some homemade biscuits, so for the ingredients, all you need is some all-purpose flour, buttermilk, mm -hmm. baking powder, salt, and some salted butter, mm -hmm. and it's very important to keep the butter cold and to work with the dough as little as possible so that that butter doesn't start to soften. I just place those biscuits on a greased baking sheet and I pop them in the fridge until I'm ready to bake them and those will bake at 450 for 10 minutes and for the rest of the biscuits I'm just gonna freeze those so I just keep on making biscuits until all the dough is gone and then I put them on a plate and flash freeze them for about 30 minutes and then I put them in a freezer bag now on to the gravy I'm gonna be explaining this the best way that I can so first off you're gonna want to fry you up some meat the grease that comes from it is gonna be the base of the gravy and that's where all your flavor is gonna come from so you can use breakfast sausage bacon like I did or even a mixture of both with this amount of bacon I got a little less than two tablespoons of grease which is the perfect amount for how much gravy I was wanting to make and I hit the record button a little late but all I did was add in some plain all-purpose flour and I am cooking this over medium heat and I'm just whisking that and I like to cook mine until it turns a golden brown color and that usually takes three to four minutes and then I start to slowly pour in my milk. I'm just using 2%. You can use any kind that you want, but I am whisking that the whole time to avoid lumps. And once again, I'm not using any certain amount. I'm just doing it until it looks right. And I always like to start small. And if I need to add more later, like if it starts to get too thick, I can always add more. Once I get most of those lumps broken up, I turn my heat up to a little above medium and I just wait for it to come up to a boil. That's what's going to thicken your gravy and you do want to stir it pretty often because you definitely don't want your gravy to burn. Right as it is about to come up to a boil, I add in my seasoning. So all I use is salt and lots of black pepper. And as you can see, it finally came up to a low boil. And I just let that go for a few minutes until it turns into the thickness that we want. 
and then I just take it off the heat and I pour it into a little gravy dish. And I wanted to show what the biscuits look like once they come out of the oven. They did come out a little bit flatter than normal because I rolled them too thin, but still delicious. I have both of my crock pots going this morning. So in this first one, I'm making some homemade refried beans for the first time. And I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for any background noise because this one likes to be close to his mama at all times, but that's okay. Um, but anyways, I put these on at 5.30 this morning because these do have a long cooking time. They need to cook on high for eight hours. So all I have in here is some dried pinto beans, water, salt and pepper, minced garlic, onion powder, and some cumin. Um, I might be leaving something out, but I will definitely leave this recipe in the description box. And then also I'm making some chicken taquitos. I've made this recipe a handful of times and we really like it. So all I have is two chicken breasts and I have seasoned that with salt, pepper, chili powder, garlic powder, and cumin. And then I just put on a block of cream cheese. So I'm just gonna let that cook on low for four hours and then I'm gonna come back once that is fully cooked. So I have just shredded up my chicken and I was wanting to add that in the recipe that I'm gonna be leaving in the description box, it does call for water to be added to the chicken while it is cooking. I always skip that step because I don't think it's necessary. The chicken puts out plenty of moisture as it is cooking. And as you can tell, this is the perfect consistency because you are gonna be stuffing this in some tortillas and you definitely don't want it to be soupy. So I'm gonna to get to wrapping these up. I'm wondering slowly. the bottom of my pan with some Pam and I'm also going to be spraying the top so that they can get crispy. And now I'm just going to pop them in my oven at 400 for 10 minutes. So here are the beans after the eight hours. They are super soft. So now I'm just going to puree them with this immersion blender. I've never used one before. I bought this just for this recipe. So I'm just going to get to blending. I topped my taquitos with some sour cream and a little bit of parsley for color. And on the side, I have some taco sauce to dip them in. And then for the refried beans, I topped it with a little bit of shredded cheese. These turned out great, but I feel like the stuff in the can is just as good. But it was nice to make my own for the first time. And then I have a lot of leftovers to freeze. But yeah, that was dinner for Thursday. Today, I am making copycat Crunchwrap Supremes like you can find at Taco Bell. So I've already made my taco meat. I just used ground beef and a packet of this Taco Bell taco seasoning. And then for the wraps, you're going to need the burrito size tortillas, the smaller ones. I'm using um, some leftover refried beans from yesterday. I'm going to heat those up before I put it on the wrap. And there's some lettuce, sour cream, queso cheese, shredded cheese, and you're supposed to use tostada shells. I'm probably not saying that right. But um, I went to three different stores looking for them. Could not find them. So I'm substituting these taco shells for that. I'm just going to kind of crumble them up. And I'm sure it'll work the same, but I'm going to show myself putting this together. I've made this a few times before and we always love it so and I'm not serving it with any size because it's very filling so yeah that's our dinner for Friday on Saturday we went out to eat at Palmer's in Lexington Kentucky I went with a bunch of my friends for my early birthday dinner I will be turning 25 on Tuesday which just blows my mind I got the champagne chicken with mashed potatoes and veggies there was zucchini squash and peppers it was so delicious and it was such a fun night 
On Sunday, I made some pickled chicken. I got this idea from Bless Jess. She made this in one of her What's for Dinner videos. So I just took some chicken breast, sliced it up into strips, and I let it marinate in that pickle juice for several hours. And then here, I skipped a step. Instead of seasoning my own flour, I had this box of already seasoned flour in my pantry that my dad gave me. So I wanted to give that a try. So I just took that chicken out of the pickle juice and put it in a separate bag. And then I sprinkled one teaspoon of vegetable oil and a little bit of kosher salt, rubbed it around, and then I added in my flour. So here's the part that I love about this recipe. All you need is two and a half teaspoons of vegetable oil. So very little. So once the oil heats up, I add in my chicken tenders. Um, I had to do this in two batches, but I let them cook for four minutes on one side, flip them, and let them go for another four minutes. So it turned out delicious. She was right. We loved them. Um, I served them with some fries that I cooked in my air fryer and some pickles. These are the ones that I use. They're a little bit more pricey, but they're worth it to me. But that wraps up this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all back next week.